Hi everybody, my name is Charles Penny. I'm 16 years old and I currently attend Mangane College and today I'm going to be learning about how to become a civil laboratory technician. From the roads we drive on to the foundations on which they're laid, if it's built by engineers, you can rest assured it's been checked and controlled by a civil laboratory technician. A civil lab technician is someone who's involved in a variety of jobs. Uh, they might be out in the field collecting samples, bringing them back to the lab, test those samples and draw up reports and then uh, send them off to the engineers or whoever might be interested in that information. To give Charles a feel for the job, Michael will give him a tour of the environments in which they work. Civil engineering testing laboratories place great importance on safety in the workplace. So after a health and safety briefing, Michael and Charles headed to the lab where road materials are tested. As a civil lab technician, this is one of the many areas in which you have to be proficient in, is testing that asphalt and the bitumen. Yep. Well, I've got Kerwin lined up, so we'll go and see him, yep. and he's going to take you through a few tests. And what kind of test do you do? Well, today we'll be doing a softening point test. Um, it pretty much tells you at what temperature does the bitumen soften at. Yeah. Um, it's a good indication of what temperature um, the bitumen is going to be able to withstand out on the roads. You, you don't want it melting on your feet as you're walking on it, you know, because it yeah, absorbs yeah. a lot of the sun. Um, well, quality control is a, um, an important part of a lab technician because um, the work that we do here really affects um, the materials that perform out on site. And so in order to build a good road, we need to test every aspect of that road in order for it to last a long time. So what are we looking for and what are we trying to find out with this test? Well, basically what you're trying to see is at what temperature do those balls fall through those rings and hit that bottom plate. Okay. And at that temperature, it'll tell you the softening point of the bitumen. If the materials that we use didn't comply to the specification, what you would find is so instead of it lasting 20 years, it only lasts six months and uh, you spend a few hundred thousand dollars uh, on a road that um, could have been done right the first time. All right, so that's perfect. There's only about 0.2 degrees difference between them, which is exactly what we're looking for. And the softening point is almost at 50 degrees, which is pretty good for the scrap of bitumen. Product testing is just one area a technician can specialise in. Testing the foundations on which roads and structures are built is another of the civil lab technician's responsibilities. What these guys do is they determine how certain soils are going to behave uh, once it's built on. The civil engineering technicians will provide a report for the engineer and he can look at it and say, OK, so this is what we need to do to be able to construct this you know, high-rise building on the site or we'll build this bridge here or whatever. Methods of testing vary depending on the material under scrutiny. Many tests are mechanised, but others like soil compaction tests are surprisingly simple, ideal for beginners like Charles. It's really important to get it right and make sure you pay attention to the detail because these results are used further down the track at making sure that your road's not going to be wobbly if you get a test wrong and the standard compaction wrong and you're going to the wrong compactive effort, you could have a really squishy road and things like that, so it's very important that you make sure your results are right. So what would you use this test for? So for example, this sample here is coming from a road that they're doing, and this is the subgrade layer, which is the bottom layer of the road. And then they're putting it down and they're just laying it. So with this, they'll figure out where's the optimum moisture content to have it in. Yep. And then when they go out on site again and they do field testing, they'll make sure that it is at that optimum moisture content when it's placed. Oh, cool. The laboratory often sets the benchmark for testing in the field. So you may have a soil sample come to a laboratory you test it for its maximum density, which is you're basically testing in the perfect world. And then on site, where conditions are a little different than the laboratory, you're giving the contractor a target to aim to. So we've spent a bit of time in the lab so far. Yep. Have you found it? I've enjoyed it a lot. There's a lot of interesting stuff that's been happening so far. That's great. We, um, you know, it's not only based in the lab. No. We also spend a lot of time out in the field. Um, and so today, we're going we're gonna to show you a bit of that too. OK. G'day Charles, nice to meet you. You too. So today we're going to do some tests in the field. Yep. And I understand you've done a few in the lab. Um, I've done my standard compaction tests where I was patting the soil or clear with the hammer. Yep, that's right, and seeing how much soil you can get yep. into the mould. Yep. OK, so today we're going to do that in the field and see whether the contractors have managed to achieve that density. Okay. So the first thing we're going to need is our nuclear densometer. Now, the reason we keep the handle locked when we're transporting it is because it's radioactive. All right. So if you want to just shoot up into the car, you'll see a folder. Yep. You'll just grab me that and we'll unlock the nuke. Field testing is really a quality assurance check to make sure that the contractor or whoever is, is working on the site 
is meeting the design criteria that the engineer has specified and then as a laboratory technician obtain a whole lot of data, bring it back, give it to the engineer and then he can say we can move on to the next stage or uh, we have to dig that out and, and compact it all again. Okay Charles, so we've got our test site all ready to go. Yep. So now we need to push the probe into the ground. We want to walk th about three metres away while this test is running. Okay. And then when we come back and record our data, we'll pull the handle back up, back into the safe mode. Sweet. So this fill, Charles, is structural fill. So something needs to be built on this. Okay. So effectively what we're looking for, the two main things are the density and the moisture content which shows the amount of compaction the contractors have been able to achieve. Okay. So that relates back to that standard compaction test you did in terms of the density you could fit into that mould. Sweet. All, makes, all sudden makes sense now. Out in the field, it is a bit of hard labour. It can be quite labour intensive, but I think quite rewarding at the end of the day. You've got to be hard working. You've got to be flexible. Think outside the square. The answer's not always in front of you. And I think someone who just enjoys science and maths and dirt, really. Ooh. Charles, end of the day, how'd you find it? Yeah, I really enjoyed it. What did you enjoy the most about it? Well, it's just the overall experience. Yeah. Just learning about all the different tests that um, civil engineer technicians go through. And a favourite test from the day? Probably this one. That one, best, best workout. workout. Yeah, best workout I've had in a while. <laughs> Great stuff. Job well done. Thanks. Thanks, buddy. <sighs> To become a qualified civil laboratory technician, you'll need to complete a national certificate in civil engineering laboratory level four, which can be gained on the job as you work. For those wishing to progress further, the national certificate in civil engineering laboratory level five allows for advancement to senior technician and opens opportunities to progress to laboratory manager. An interest in sciences will certainly help your career progression and you can expect to work in a wide range of environments around the country. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.